So yesterday, I spoke about how Magic Eden is flip-flopping on its royalties. It is a major liability for a business to be heavily reliant on a third party for its revenue. So today, we're going to discuss how these projects can enforce royalties even if the marketplaces do not. Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real-world value. So for the most part of this year, a lot of people have been speaking about a lot of projects launching their own marketplace. And sure, it sounds great because that way you can enforce a royalty, you can do whatever it is that you want. And of course, that project is going to generate their own revenue, not depending on that third party, like I said in the intro. Now, that sounds great. However, not everyone is, let's say, the CryptoPunks or Basie or any of these blue chip projects that definitely can generate their own traffic, has their own interests and press and so forth. What ends up happening is these marketplaces serve their place. There is a lot of traffic there. It is already built in that the masses are going to go there. They're going to check. They're going to browse. And they're familiar with these platforms. Someone that might not exactly know a particular project is not going to go to their website or their secondary marketplace and transact, connect their wallet and do whatever it is over there. Most likely, they're going to feel most confident on a platform such as OpenSea or Magic Eden in this case when I'm speaking about these Solana NFTs because that was really what kicked off the discussion yesterday because they're the ones that are doing the flip-flopping royalties or no royalties. I know a lot of people, they only buy on these major marketplaces. They don't go to these new smaller marketplaces that are popping up even if they are 0% royalty or whatever it is. They're comfortable on the OpenSeas, on the Magic Edens. So it would be nice to be even more decentralized. Every single project having their own marketplace, you go there and you can purchase it and then that project gets the revenue. However, I don't think it is practical. And sure, a project might look at it and say, well, that is just another opportunity that we can have to generate some income. So why wouldn't we do that? Well, first of all, there's going to be lower traffic on those websites than there's going to be on an OpenSea or Magic Eden or any other major marketplace because low traffic is going to lead to low demand. Low demand leads to low prices. And when you have low prices, although you're the one who controls those market fees and so forth, well, if the price is low, less is going to be generated anyways. So in theory, you want the product to be visible in the most places possible. And in the case of this, the product happens to be the NFTs. So these proprietary marketplaces, although it sounds good on paper, it might not necessarily be the case in reality. But besides the additional headache of having to build out something else, there's going to be more things that could be broken, more customer service, but also that's going to create a lot of overhead because number one, this platform has to be built. In addition to that, there's going to be more liability for the project. What if there's a data leak? What can happen if, let's say, something on the back end gets broken into? There's so many ways for things to go wrong that you're probably, as a business, going to have to carry a little bit more insurance. You're going to have to beef up the security team, hire some more engineers bring some coders on. Of course, it's going to have to be audited for security and all those different things that just might not be feasible for a project that might not be making hundreds of millions of dollars. Let's say this is a project that just makes, say, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Well, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to invest potentially millions of dollars into infrastructure that is probably going to be worth even more than the entire project itself. So I spent all this time on speaking about, well, why I would not recommend that being the number one space. So what exactly would I recommend? What I would recommend is for a project to offer some online benefits that could be connected, that could be viewed or accessed via this token gating so what I would actually recommend is for a project to offer some services or some content or whatever it might be that they can put behind a paywall or a token gated wall to know that it's going to check to see, OK, were royalties paid for this particular NFT holder? Now, all of this information is going to be stored on the blockchain, so the code could be actually set up. It's not like someone has to manually go check EtherScan every single transaction. This could be set up to be automated to ensure that this person, whoever has this NFT, in order to access these various things, well, they're going to be, have to be someone who played that royalty. Now, if that person does not pay the royalty, let's say they went through some of these royalty avoiding platforms, well, guess what? They're not going to receive those benefits. And 
if they do want to receive those benefits, they're going to have to basically pay a retroactive royalty. Now, how could this possibly be done? Now, you could possibly set up, let's say, whatever the floor price is, have a set amount that a person needs to come in paying X amount in order to access that stuff. So I'm just going to use very simple figures and I'm going to use US dollars. So that way it doesn't matter if this is on ETH, Solana, Cardano, I mean, wherever it is, an NFT is an NFT. And eventually all these blockchains, all these marketplaces are going to have to have the same discussion anyways so let's just say this is a $1,000 NFT and then the royalty is 5% just using very simple numbers that works out to be $50 now let's say the floor price for that project is hovering around the $1,000 range now it doesn't really matter if you have a super rare or you have one of the floor ones just working out that okay for someone to access these things as a project we'll make a decision to reevaluate where the floor price is what we could be averaging or expecting to get per sale and that is the base model for to getting into uh, re receiving all these access. So let's just say for the month of November, every single person that's coming in, if they're a new holder, they have to have either paid that royalty or they're going to have to basically pay an access pass for $50 worth of whatever cryptocurrency it is in order to access whatever it is going forward. And I think that could be a very unique way that they could do this. It could all be automatic scanning, ether scan and all of that stuff. And it would really ensure that the project is getting that revenue because it doesn't really matter if that $50 worth of royalties was paid up front through Magic Eden or whatever marketplace it is, or if it is paid after the fact by purchasing one of these access passes. And at the end of the day, this is also going to push these projects to be a little bit more innovative. It's going to make them a lot more business minded in the sense that we're not just relying on sales and that little percentage, what well, we're going to have to offer something that is of value that these tokens are going to be able to give people the access to see. So I think that is a win-win for everyone. But doing this also, I think having that as a standard, it takes all the pressure and all the control out of the hands of the marketplaces. Because at the end of the day, as I said, when I open this thing up, a business should not be heavily reliant on one single entity or one party for revenue. And in the case of Ethereum, well, that party, for the most part, is going to be OpenSea. For Solana, for the most part, it's going to be Magic Eden. And since we have all the tools at our fingertips, the blockchain is recording everything, keeping this open ledger. Well, why not just automate the whole thing and just do it that way rather than trying to fight them to honor royalties or whatever cultural changes are going within this space? Well, set your own rules as a project. And be a real business, entrepreneurs solve problems, and this is a problem solved. So I would love to know, what are your thoughts on this? How would you, as a project or a creative, let's say you're an artist, go about the shift towards no royalties? Do you think my suggestion is a good idea, or do you have a better one? I would love to hear it. Please feel free to reach out to me at Tropic Vibes on Twitter, or, of course, using the contact information in the show notes. But as usual, I just want to thank you for taking time to listen to this as we're learning and building Web3 together. So until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.